I go and swipe this to the left to the shader editor, you can already notice a little bit of a difference. All right, so this looks nothing like the old principled BSDF. Okay, and the reason why is because it has simply been made a bit easier, right? It has all the things that you need for your 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 default settings usually. When you add a texture, you need the base color, metallic value, the roughness, the normal, and sometimes the displacement, right? So everything is there, and you may need the alpha um, for some things as well. So the other stuff is usually just something you use when you are creating custom materials. All right, so that is not something you always need. So they have just folded that down to a smaller little menu that you can still use and fold out if you need it. All right, so that is the main difference. Emission is now at the bottom. That is something that you may need more often, but you can also just add an emission material, I guess, all right? So you don't really need the principal BSDF at all for that case. All right, something else that changed is the subsurface stuff here, all right? And the thing that changed is we now have a simple weight of the subsurface. And for those who don't know what it is, subsurface is basically light that scatters in your object, like in the surface layers of your object. For example, when you have skin and light comes from behind your ears, for example, light will scatter around in your ear and you will get that nice kind of orange light. Same for when you, you've done this as a, as a child, like shine through your fingers or through your palm of your hand with a flashlight, you will see the light at the other end. And that is basically done by subsurface scattering. All right, so these values are now a little bit different than what they used to be. And you may notice that the actual color of the subsurface scattering is completely gone, right? You used to be able to just add a color to your subsurface. And right now that is not really the case anymore. All right, so that is something you will have to tweak yourself. I think um, basically it already takes a bit from your base color, but you can tweak it by changing the radius pretty much. It has always been a little bit of a of a mystery, I would say. Um, but these are the well the RGB values usually of the subsurface scattering, which means that if you turn everything down except the last one, you should be getting. Well, it's RGB, so you will be getting blue, for example. And if you want red, and by default, this is red. Perhaps it's basically set on skin subsurface scattering by default. I'm not sure, but if this is the red value, then meaning that this will basically be red because the red value is one and the rest is quite low. Well, so keep that in mind. And you also have a scale value now, which means that you can tweak your, your subsurface depth, right? So how far it goes into your object with this slider. And it does not really depend on the initial scale of your object anymore. Or at least you can now tweak it with a separate slider, right? So if your human is now 10 meters instead of two, but you want to keep the same amount of subsurface scattering, you can just turn the scale down a little bit. All right, so that is amazing. And let me try this. Um, this is another thing that I figured out is um, for our USA people, other kinds of <laughs> metric systems, measurements and stuff. Um, and you wanna follow the, the same sizes that I use. For example, if I would type in a scale of five meters and you have inches, you can just type in five M and it will convert it to your inches in form of your eyes. The same way if I now type in five inch, it's going to convert that to the actual meters for me, right? So it is, there's like a built-in um, kind of dimension transition system, right? The, the calculation will be done. So you will have it visualized in your own measurements, which is quite nice. All right, so the other thing that is a little bit different is the sheen. Um, I think the difference here is mainly that you now have two sliders and that you can now just tweak. And for those who don't know what sheen is, um, sheen is basically when you have a fabric material and there are tiny little microfibers sticking out of that material, all right? Tiny little hairs that are in the normal direction of the surface. Then light will not really always get to your initial surface, but they will be scattering and bouncing around in between of these microfibers, right? And that can give you a different color, a more dull haze over your object with the colors of those fibers, for example. 
And that's basically what sheen is. It's basically used for fabrics, a lot for um, silk materials as well, I believe. And that is basically what sheen is. And with this sheen value, it is now very easy to give it a specific tint. And with the roughness and weight, you can really specify the colors that you want to have as your scene. And, and let's see if we can actually visualize that a little bit. Let's go to the rendered view. And we can hit cycles with a GPU for now. Let's give it a second. There we go. So now if we have an actual sheen and we set the weight to one and the color to purple, for example, you can see that we are getting a little bit of that pink color over, over our object, right? And the better way to visualize this really is with some cloth, of course. So maybe we can just create a quick little cloth layer here, right? How I you create cloth basically is with a small plane. If I just want something like a like a small carpet that falls over my object, then I'll just add a small plane with some geometry, right? Edge loops is control R. So add some geometry and just turn this into cloth and turn your collision object into a collision and you should just be able to play your scene. There we go, cloth, right? So let's just subdivide this one more time or maybe two. Um, this is different, interesting. So even the modifier panel is now different, which is quite interesting, right? So we want an actual um, generate subdivision surface. There we go. And that's the wrong object. Generate a subdivision surface. There we go. And let's set that to two and in front of our cloth simulation and then just play it. All right, it's gonna be a little bit slow, but it's totally fine. It's not like we're gonna be waiting for 20 minutes. There we go, we're actually getting some nice folds in our cloth, looking quite beautiful if you ask me. There we go, this, this will do. And I wanna keep it in the shape, so I'm just gonna go to object and convert to mesh, for example, delete this, and this is now our cloth, All right? Beautiful. So let's see this with a sheen, all right? So let's add a weight of one and a sheen tint of maybe a little bit red, and let's make the original color a bit darker so we can really see what's happening there. All right, so you can see that the sheen is basically adding that little bit of a rough kind of haze over of our objects, right? And you can almost really visualize that as, as a dust layer on top of your object, right? Because dust is pretty much little tiny hairs as well, right? So this, if you turn this to white, you're pretty much adding a little dust layer over your object. So if I make this, make this blue, there we go. Uh, maybe a little bit darker so we can actually see it. We are getting a little bit of that of that haze over of our color, right? And if we turn this to, uh, let's say, more of a pink color, we can get really interesting results with that as well. All right, so combine this with a fabric material from the Blender kit or from the Blender universe at some point, and we will have beautiful materials. <laughs>